بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الحبت في الله continuing on in our studies of uh, اصول الثلاثه we reached the point of the treaties where we're discussing ibadah and uh, where the imam was talking about ibadah and he mentioned various types of ibadah a worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and most of them were ibadah uh batania or batana meaning ibadah or worship internal worship acts like tawakkul what wa tawassal wa ragaba wa rahaba you know having hope and fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trusting putting all of your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he said uh after mentioning those various acts of ibadah he said rahmatullahi alayhi uh regarding a, a very important qaida regarding ibadah he said faman sarafa minha shay'in li ghayri Allah fa huwa mushrik kafir wa dalil qawluhu ta'ala wa man yad'u ma Allah ilahan akhar la burhan lahu bihi fa inna ma hisabuhu 'inda rabbihi innahu la yuflihu al-kafirun the imam said all acts of worship which Allah commanded people to perform should be purely sincerely and exclusively for Allah and intending the performance of any of these acts for other than Allah is an act of disbelief and polytheism and then he said the evidence for this is the saying of Allah which means and whoever invokes besides Allah any other god of whom he has no proof then his reckoning is only with his lord surely al kafirun meaning the disbelievers in in tawhid uh in in polytheists pagans ido- uh, idolaters will not be successful innahu la yuflihu al kafirun and then he said verily uh and and he also said meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your lord said invoke me and ask for me anything i will respond to your invocation verily those who scorn my worship they will surely enter hell in humiliation so this is the ayah and it's the dalil for fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa qala rabbukum ad'uni yastajib lakum inna alladhina yastakbiruna 'an ibadati fa sayadkhuluna al-jahannam dakhirin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says invoke me and and I will respond to your invocation verily those who scorn my worship they will surely enter hell in humiliation so letting us know that of course islam is built on tawhid that all everything we do related to ibadah and what makes it ibadah is that it's solely for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it has ikhlas lillah that our worship is totally and completely directed to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his sake for his pleasure to barak wa ta'ala and that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa qala rabbukum wa qala rabbukum ad'uni astajib lakum and your lord said supplicate to me and i will give you meaning that if you supplicate to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you exercise and haqq hadha tawhid and have ikhlas lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will answer you one way or another either he will answer you in this life or he will answer you in the next life and either depending upon your sins or depending upon uh, other factors 
or maybe that maybe that there isn't the good that you thought was in you receiving that supplication. For example, someone who supplicates for an immense amount of wealth. Perhaps it's good for them. Perhaps it may not be good for them. Perhaps that may be a test for their iman. So for that reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give it to them in this life. Or perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it in store for them in the next. Or the third situation is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that to them. So you want to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that's the shahi here, is that the ibadah is to Allah azza wa jal alone. And those who invoke other than Allah, they will uh, enter into the hellfire because that's shirk. And likewise, what, what is imp an, another benefit of this ayat because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَقْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Verily, those who يَسْتَقْبِرُونَ Those people who are, that have istikbar, meaning that they are arrogant. عَنْ عِبَادَتِي they're arrogant in worshiping him, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is one of the most wickedest crimes that you could commit. With all the evil that we see, we see the people like uh, these uh, takfiri terrorist groups like ISIS killing, burning people alive and doing wicked and evil. And Allah regards shirk even worse than that because those people can still be forgiven by Allah. They can still repent. And maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish them for their wickedness. Perhaps. And that's for him subhanahu wa ta'ala to decide. But the one who dies upon worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and may Allah protect us and our families from this. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Those people who die in that state of shirk, shirk al-akbar, they will not be forgiven by their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise, those people who have kibr, يستقبرون عن عبادتي, they are those people who are arrogant in worshiping Allah. And we have to remind ourselves, this. I'm, I'm glad that we are looking at this ayat right now. This is a reminder for me to make sure don't be short in your sunnah prayers. Don't be arrogant in raising... Sometimes we get so far away, we're so caught up in the dunya, we forget to raise our hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We forget to make those in our sujood uh, to pray to Allah, to, to supplicate to Allah. Don't be of those who are arrogant with regards to worshiping Allah, which they can only have success from that. You can only have success from worshiping Allah and supplicating to Him in humility. But the one who refuses that, who's arrogant, who doesn't believe in Allah, who thinks they're too good to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to think they, they're too knowledgeable, they're, they're, they have too much culture, they're too refined to bow down before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people will have humiliation in the hereafter. And perhaps in the dunya. A lot of times you see in the dunya. And because this is fresh in my mind, I'm thinking uh, about, as I was just listening to a program about an individual that I know personally, I knew personally, who was an extremist takfiri. At one time, he was with Ahl Sunnah, you know, as a new Muslim. And through his journeys, he apostated in the end after 10, and he became a major spy, allegedly responsible for killing uh, Anwar Awlaki and, 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 and so forth. A lot, a lot of things were attributed to him in his, his spy work. But what made me think is now that this person, he believes he is free, he said that he is free to have his belief now. Yes, no one can force you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I am sure, even from reading his life story, you can see that he, doesn't, he hasn't found happiness. And I am sure that all of those people who conspired with him to entrap the Muslims, even if they were wicked, takfiri, jihadi, uh, 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 extremists, the fact that he was plotting against the Muslims and then now he يستخبر, يستخبر عن عبادة الله 
that he is now arrogant in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm sure that we'll see his humiliation here. Perhaps he'll be one of those who die of overdose of cocaine. Perhaps he'll be of those die, those people who die in, in the houses of prostitution or whatever. We don't know what Allah has in store for him. But the point is, is a humiliation for not worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will come in this life or the next. May Allah bless us with ikhlas with tabat, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself. And the shaitan was sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.